Hello and welcome to Hardline Rugby, the channel focusing on the rugby union in the Americas. The 2021 Eastern Conference remains unchanged on the surface from 2020, but once you get into the meat and potatoes of it all, you'll notice that it's a far different league. Big names leaving, bigger names joining, a few relocation changes, and targets to achieve. I'll be giving the insight into each team, the new faces in the squad, the home ground for 2021, players to look out for, and what their mini goals for the new season will be. These are the teams of the MLR 2021 Eastern Conference. The Free Jacks burst onto the scene with a shock victory over local rivals Rugby United New York at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas. Unfortunately for the Free Jacks, this would be their only victory in the shortened campaign. Losses to Utah, San Diego, Seattle, and NOLA left a lot to be worked on for the 2021 season. Simon Corcoll and Timothy Gulliman returned to play in France, while Sean McNulty departed to join his third MLR team, the LA Guilty Eats. However, the Free Jacks have been able to bolster their roster with former Sharks captain Tara Matembu, Peter Janssen for the Lions, and Edinburgh utility back Ducky Fife. All will be led by the new head coach, Ryan Martin. The Free Jacks' home, Union Point Sports Complex, will be able to allow 2,000 fans when allowed to host at full capacity. It will be eager to play host as the 2020 season was cancelled before any home games would be played at the Weymouth Grand. For new fans, keep an eye out for Japanese prop Kensuke Hatsugayama, fly half maestro tag leader, and Canadian lock Josh Larson. With only five games played in 2020, there's not much to base the Free Jacks on, so their goal for 2021 will be to finish in the top half of the table. Another new team for 2020, the Rattlesnakes also started their inaugural season by notching up their win column with a home win against Utah and an away win against Nola Gold. Results against New York, Toronto and DC didn't go their way, but they were able to claim two losing bonus points, which is nothing to shy away from. Although Yemi Ferrante had decided to hang up the boots, ATL had been focusing on adding to their new roster with their three foreign imports being Jaguares Batista Excura, South African Roan Garros, and Dutchman Jonas Petrokopoulos. ATL will continue to call Life University their home ground, with up to 2,000 people allocated at Lupo Family Field. Due to the pandemic, they won't be the only team to be based here. If you're looking to support Rugby ATL, players to watch are fly half Kurt Coleman, Eagles prop Chance Wengolowski, and Captain Canuck, Matt Heaton. Again, there's not much to base ATL on with only five MLR games to their name. Their goal for the 2021 season is to finish in the top three of the Eastern Conference. A bit of a shock to the system for New York, as the new boys from New England took a decisive 20 point victory at the season opener in 2020. They were able to turn it around with victories against Austin, Atlanta, and Houston before falling short against San Diego aiming a further three bonus points across these games. French star Matteo Bassero has returned to France, and Jonas Petrokopoulos and Paddy Ryan have both opted to play for different MLR teams. That said, Rooney have made some interesting choices to replace them, such as Kiwi Andrew Ellis, Brazilian Winton Robolo, and rugby league convert Quinton Gawati. MCU Park will continue to be home for the Roosters, though current regulations seem as though the fans in attendance won't reach the 7,000 the park can hold. If you're looking to support the Roosters, then you should be supporting Captain Dylan Fawcett, flying winger Connor Wallace-Sims, and in his final year as a professional rugby player, fullback Ben Foden. Rooney have an MLR season under their belts, so they have more to prove and more specifics to focus on. The pandemic prevented them from being able to play the game that they would have wanted the most in their short history, though they will have the chance to make it right in match 7 when they get the chance to play, and ideally, beat the Seattle Seawolves. The longest serving team in the Eastern Conference, the Gold got their 2020 campaign off to a great start, with a huge win over Old Glory. They continued with successes over Colorado and New England, but succumbed to both Atlanta and San Diego. There hasn't been much movement away from the club, with only Lindsey Stevens to have confirmed his departure to LA. Yet, the Gold have been boosting their roster, with signings like Pat O'Toole from Glasgow, 
Damien Stevens from Olympia Lions, and JP Duplessis from San Diego. New Orleans will be continuing to play at the Gold Mine, formerly known as the Shrine on Airline. This former baseball stadium allows up to 7,000 people to attend games, barring any restrictions. If you're looking to back the gold in the 2021 season, keep an eye out for captain Kyle Bailey, centre Carl Meyer, and try machine Cam Dolan. New Orleans have been a team that's come up short when it's needed the most crucial time. For 2021, their goal needs to be a guaranteed playoff spot. The best ranked new team when 2020 was put on hold, Old Glory began with a crushing defeat by New Gold. What followed, however, was a four-match winning streak, starting with beating the defending champion Seattle, then Houston, Austin, and Atlanta. It does make you wonder how far they could have gone had the season not been shortened. Sadly, DC will be without the World Cup champion Tendai de Vis Intoera, who has now retired from professional rugby. He is one name on the shortlist of players not returned to the DC, with Travis Larson moving to San Diego. In their stead, we have Luke Campbell joining from Toronto, Jamie Denver from San Diego, and Callum Gibbons from Glasgow. Old Glory have announced that they will be playing their 2021 home games at Segler Field. The 5,000 seater venue is expected to welcome the first DC home game in round two. New fans and old should keep a watchful eye out for flanker Mungo Mason, centre Threaten Palamo, and winger Doug Fraser. As with Atlanta and New England, DC hasn't been around long enough to have developed much of a track record in the season. Therefore, their goal for 2021 will be able to finish in the top three of the conference. The conference leaders and second overall in MLR's shortened season, the sole Canadian team continued where they left off after their inaugural season. Four consecutive victories on the road, including a rout of their 2019 semi-final opponents, Seattle. The one bellish being a loss to Colorado in what turned out to be their final game of the season. Over 2020, there were two big hits to the Arrows roster. Main kicker Sam Malcolm signed for the Kaimaichi Sea Waves in Japan, while top try scorer Dan Moore announced his retirement from professional rugby. In their place has been a swathe of signings from South America, including Juan Cruz Gonzalez, Manuel Montero, and Joaquin Tukule. Due to the border restrictions between Canada and the USA caused by the pandemic, the Arabs have made an agreement with Rugby ATL to share their facilities until the border reopens fully. They will also be calling Lupo Family Field their home ground for the time being. If you feel like back in the blue and white this season, keep a watch on key players like Manuel Diana, Ben Lesage, and Lucas Rumble. The Arabs have yet to face two of the three teams that joined in 2020, but there is still one team that has a perfect record over them. The Arrows' goal for 2021 is to finally get a win over New Orleans Gold. Which teams do you see making it all the way to the MLR playoffs? Leave your teams in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell notification to stay up to date on all the videos for Hardline Rugby. As always, my name is Stuart, and thank you for watching.